YouTube. Hi. Why y'all so cute? Showing all that love for the last couple of videos. That's really appreciated and super awesome. And uh, on my last Ultimate Ranger build, I saw there were some comments asking for an Ultimate Melee build, and I got you. It does require access to the Passage and Crystal Biomes, which is kind of like later in the game, but you can access the Crystal Biomes for sure, like right after the wall, as long as you have a reliable amount of mining, and then not too long after, if, if you're really searching for mining gear, you should be able to access the passage as well. Once you're able to access the crystal biomes reliably, you'll be on the hunt for the obliteration ray, which uh, here's all the drop chances. You got the alien tech chests, uh, lock solarite chest, and even orbital turrets have a chance to drop it as well. Um, these have a 20% chance, around 20% chance to get it from the challenge arena. So whenever you come across those challenge arenas, it's definitely worth doing them to try and get this to drop. I would say that's probably your best bet, but nothing, it doesn't hurt to try and just, you know, farm through those, those walls, get as many lock solarite chests as possible. Anytime you see an orbital turret, just go out of your way for, you know, the chance that it drops. There's also a 19% chance from Pydra, the fire Titan, but if you're playing on a harder difficulty, it's probably not the most reliable to try and farm that too often unless you just have like a really strong build or a pretty powerful squad to, to help you with that. On the very edge of the map lies very, very dangerous territory. But with a teleporter, either naturally placed near, the, near that biome, near the edge, or one that you craft yourself just outside of it. You don't really want to put a teleporter inside. That's... Not, it's not very safe. You'll give yourself a very reasonable chance to enter the passage, search for Pandorium Ore, and if you are killed by the enemies here, it's not a big deal since you can just head right back in. The odds of you handling the monsters in the passage super early on, it's very unlikely. You'll likely want more Pandorium Ore for upgrading later on, but the sooner you get 100, the sooner you'll be able to get the ultimate weapon and that'll make your life a lot easier going forward. So just focus on getting a hundred of the Pandorium ore before you, you know, gather more than you actually need. You'll also need 50 Cytoplasm. This can be obtained in a variety of ways, one of which is defeating the monsters in the passage, but they're super tough. So if it seems unlikely or proving too difficult, do your best to avoid enemies and instead collect cytoplasm from the large and regular fossil clusters scattered around the passage. They can also be found in cultist chests, chests that are within these tiny temple structures along the walls of the passage. It's super easy to be killed when you're inside of those, those, those tiny little temples, since the space is so cramped and Basically every enemy in the passage will just burrow through all the walls. So you're going to have to be very careful if you go and try to explore those, look for the chests. But if you manage to find the chests, not only will they sometimes contain the cytoplasm, but they'll also have high tier loot. You can find the jungle emeralds, the desert rubies, the ocean sapphires inside of those, and even beast boosters to really like juice up your pets. So with a hundred Pandorium, 100 solarite and 50 cytoplasm and your obliteration ray you'll be able to interact with any of the rift statues that you find within the passage which are super easy to find and it's very likely that you've already run across a dozen or so by now if you've collected all of this stuff already you'll be able to turn your obliteration ray into the ultimate melee weapon the stormbringer it's nasty, it's juicy, it's it's godlike. With a deceptively low amount of melee damage, the attack rate plus the accessories will be going over, this weapon will seem absolutely busted. The most unique thing about this weapon is that it comes with 1000 base mining damage. And since there are ways to convert mining damage into melee damage, we'll be taking full advantage of that. At first, I considered the miner set since it's, uh, it has a 5 set bonus that adds 8% mining into melee damage, but I quickly realized there was a significantly better option. Once you give the weapon the ability to consider mining damage as its actual damage, uh, anything that increases damage in general is going to be affected by the new base damage, right? So this means instead of taking up every single one of our equipment slots with the miner gear, 
so that we can only get 8%, we would rather add that damage as a minimal slot space, right? Like with, with as minimal slot space used as possible. So in this case, we actually went with the Ancient Gem Necklace and the Ancient Gem Ring. Both of these can be found by mining walls. It sounds as simple as that. If you look in your mining tree, there is a, a perk called Archaeologist. And normally, this perk is not that great. But the, the trick to it is that it's one of the only ways you can actually get the, uh, the ring and the necklace. So by having this maxed out, um, you're able to just mine through walls and you'll have a chance for the the ring or the necklace to drop from any any mind wall so normally you'd be getting valuables just stuff that you can sell which you know isn't all that great but because this is the only way you can get the the ring and the necklace it's worth putting points into this once you have both you can pretty much choose any end game armor set you like if you've beaten the very final boss that armor set works incredibly well with this build that might not seem like much of a surprise but you know, some of them might actually do better than others. For me, I decided that the the end game armor set was actually pretty pretty phenomenal. It works well. It adds damage. It adds attack speed, crit chance, and so so on and so forth. It it's it's just very good in general. And its set is not that you know it's not the most impressive thing. But you're getting an additional twenty five percent damage just for having a two set, and then you have the uh, the three set for a little extra radioactive damage so in a sense you could take off one piece and just take advantage of that two set since the three set isn't that great um and just throw something else on maybe something that helps you with mining such as the um the let me see real quick you could you could even do the cabling pants just for like an 18 percent mining damage or the adventurer's hat for uh more base mining damage but also damage on top of it right so you you have a few options for that um but i chose to just go with the full set because i don't know it looks it looks kind of cool in my opinion otherwise you have the pandorium armor which is a ton of base damage uh there's also the cosmos armor that adds a ton of base mining and base damage should have one laying around here there's the cosmos armor that's just the chest piece, but I'm sure the rest of it's kind of scattered around, but it comes with mining damage. It comes with base damage and uh, even immunity to burning. Great uh, base stats for max health and uh, max, or plus armor, sorry. So yeah, there, there's a variety of different sets you can go with. It's, it's kind of crazy how just the weapon itself will allow you to do an absurd amount of damage when just used with two equipment slots. And these two basically let you just go crazy with, with a bunch of your uh, your other slots. You don't really need anything specific for this to flourish. It's just, it's all about min-maxing at that point. If you really want to squeeze something out, or if you want to go more towards something like triple damage, then you would uh, you would put on the Hydra's Tooth to like really, really juice out triple damage and stuff like that. Stuff we've talked about in previous videos. There's also the Solarite set. And that's, that seems to add more damage when you're at max health and it gives you a ton of healing on melee hit as well as crit chance and crit damage and even some attack speed. Your other ring slot benefits a lot from having a topaz ring, which is found from the bubble crabs in the ocean biome as well as locked octarine chests. And as for offhand, I went with Amaroth's beak, which is dropped from Amaroth the sea titan. Also the orb lantern. This, this lantern adds a chunk of damage to the weapon as it offers more mining damage percent. And then for the pet, I went with um, the usual. I went with the bird. It offers the triple damage chance and that could that could obliterate enemies or end bosses if, if procced enough during the fight. So again, you instead of going with Amaroth, you could go for a higher chance for that triple to proc by using the, uh, it is the tooth, right? Hydra's tooth? Yeah, so Hydra's tooth, the 4% chance to on hit to deal triple amount of damage. You get the ranged physical damage, which is irrelevant, but just a higher chance on that. Um, and that's kind of why I'm not going with it because it's, you know, I already have enough of the triple trouble going on that I'd rather have 
whatever doesn't proc triple trouble to also be a pretty substantial amount of damage. So it's up to you. Final thing we'll go over is where you'll be putting most of your skill points. For our mining tree, it's important we have uh, points in the miner strength. For vitality, make sure strong and healthy is maxed out. Vitality is right here. Strong and healthy, make sure that's maxed out. For crafting, it is helpful to have unbreakable. It's not the most important, but it's, it's helpful. For gardening, it's pretty important and helpful to have thorny weapons. You get that 25% critical hit damage obviously more important for builds that actually involve some crit chance the weapon attacks very very quickly so even having a little bit of crit chance is going to go a long way hence why the armor i'm using offers a ton of crit chance this build is obviously not the same as the ranger build where you can essentially have a hundred percent crit chance up all the time so it works a little differently than the ultimate ranger build since you're you're not really critting constantly and there's no resource uh, management with the crit. So if there's crit involved with your build, hence or uh, via maybe your ring slot, maybe you didn't go for the topaz ring or your armor. If you're if you have a crit chance on your armor, then you you could, you know, there, you're not really putting points into gardening anywhere else, really, that, that would help you combat wise. So for me, when I see things like that, I'm usually like, yeah, okay, 25% more damage off of crits. Sure, let's take it. If if even there's a 1% chance for a crit, um, then at least there's something in this tree to benefit off of. And um, if you're not going for crits, then you could essentially go towards this side of the tree and get this up to 15% chance to apply poison to enemies. And then you'll gain 25% chance to deal extra damage against poison enemies you can't have both you can't have the critical hit damage and these two as well um but you you can do the crit damage and the poison but you won't be taking advantage of the the damage of poison targets but at least that you know that gives you your crit damage and the ability to poison which isn't that great by itself but it, it is something i suppose for me i just kind of saw this as if there's a way for me to apply poison or if I'm playing with another player that happens to proc poison, then I get an additional 25% more damage. But I mean, choose choose this tree as you wish. Uh, I personally feel like thorny weapons is just your, your optimal choice for the most part. If you're big into fishing, power of omega-3 is great. For cooking, you'll want the fast food. You'll want points into fast food to increase your melee attack speed. You'll want well-fed buffs are 100% stronger. So fast food, healthy diet, and you'll also want the smell of food, which is 20% more damage as well. For magic, it's not as important, obviously, but having 5% critical hit chance is always nice. And that's it. I tried making this video much shorter since the last one ended up being mega long. Um, I know there was a chunk of, at the end was me demonstrating the, the ultimate build against the final boss. So that made the video look even longer than it actually was, but even without that, it was relatively long. So tried to make this one a little shorter. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. It is super appreciated. And if you'd like to see more content like this, do consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. All right. Take it easy. Be safe. Bye-bye.